Okay, so hi everybody. And uh, first of all, thanks for uh, giving me this opportunity to share with you uh, our data and our um, background, the scientific background, let me say. Um, I'm going to show you how we are trying to um, make new compounds to uh, drug a parasites uh, drug target to target a parasite drug target and deal with a um, neglected disease, take advantage of a couple of uh, uh, technique, uh, which are uh, XRD, of course, and CryoEM, an integrative approach. Let me say, this is the the disease we are uh, uh, facing. It is called the schistosomiasis that is caused by this guy here, that is a flat worm of the genus uh, uh, schistosoma and uh, afflicting more than 200 million people in the tropical and the subtropical areas. And uh, this disease uh, kills every year 200,000 people. And the main problem is uh, that there is only one approved drug to fight schistosomiasis that is called the presipontal that is here. Here is the structure, which is very effective to, to kill these worms, but as you might imagine, um, it can cause the emergence of unsensitive strains. So there is a urgent need to uh, make uh, new compounds to, to deal with this uh, disease. Um, since a few years ago, uh, this in, uh, protein enzyme, TGR, that stands for thyroidoxin glutathione reductase, has been recognized as a main drug target to, to deal with the schistosomiasis. Here you can see the molecular structure of TGR from schistosoma. And uh, this protein has a couple of very interesting features. The first one, uh, this protein uh, contains a selenocysteine residue, which is very, very uh, rare in cells. And that is fundamental, of course, for its enzymatic activity. The second main feature is that TGR is a, a homodimer, quite small, as you can see, 130 kilodalton, that is made by two identical uh, monomers, each one being a fusion protein, as each monomer contains at the N-terminal region a glutaredoxin domain, and at the uh, C-terminal region a thyroidoxin reductase domain. That is something very special that doesn't uh, occur in, uh, um, in, other, in other organisms, including, including mammals. But I would like to focus your attention on this region of the protein where you can find both the cofactors that TGR needs to, uh, for um, its enzymatic activity, the NADPH and the FAD cofactor, and one conserved the tyrosine, that is a rotating tyrosine, that as you can see, must move apart, must change conformational status from its original position to allow the NADPH to get inside the, uh, the protein and starts the electron transfer. The electron goes um, go from the NADPH to pass through the selenocysteine residue and then going through the thyroidoxin and glutathione pathways. And this is why TGR is a promising tar target for uh, uh, developing new compound to fight the schistosomiasis because it takes part to both the thyroidoxin and glutathione redox pathways. So pathogenic schistosoma worms has, have only one enzyme, TGR indeed, to accomplish all the um, redox pathways related to, to thyroidoxin and glutathione, and then to accomplish all these important cellular processes. While in other organisms like uh, uh, mammals, the thyroidoxin and glutathione systems are divided because they are driven by two different sets of enzymes. And indeed, if you kill the activity of TGR, 
or if you silence its expression, you definitely kill um, worms after a few days. But there is a main problem regarding how to inhibit TGR. Or in general, as you can see, all thyroidoxin reductase containing this selenocysteine. Uh, the main problem is uh, there is a lack of specificity. All the inhibitors found so far are electrophytes that bind covalently and non-selectively TGR. The binding occurs on the C-terminus onto the selenocysteine. So there is no specificity in bind. And this leads, of course, on the second problem. There is an off-target activity because these electrophile inhibitors can bind all the low PKE cysteines in cell or other, other proteins that contain selenocysteines. The third problem is the lack of structural data about uh, complexes made by TGR and inhibitors complexes. Because the selenocysteine, which is the main target of these electrophiles, lies on a, the C-terminus, which is very mobile in the thyroidoxy reductase in general. And as you can, uh, can know, uh, crystallography on very mobile uh, regions is very, very challenging to, to perform. So there is a need to have new compounds, but hopefully also new allosteric sites for drug. And uh, this is what we have been done in the last few years. We are trying to uh, discover new fragments able to bind to TGR from schistosoma mansoni and link them to make chimeric compounds with improved activity. We basically started from this kind of fragment-based approach, the fragment linking approach. We used the co small commercially available fragments with molecular weight less than 250 Dalton and high solubility to map new sites Druggable site in a TGR and then linked together through chemical linkers. Basically, we, we, we identified um, more or less 100 commercially available small fragments through a uh, large quantitative hydrocrus screenings. And uh, through the combination of uh, these uh, compounds, these fragments with TGR, we discovered two new druggable sites that is called site that they are called the site one and the site two. The site one is very close here to the binding side of the FAD cofactor and the NADPH cofactor and of course to the rotating tyrosine. The site two is here. But sorry, I'd like to focus uh, uh, your attention on the site one which is a new regulatory allosteric site that we call it doorstop pocket. Why doorstop? Basically because uh, we used some of the fragments identified by quantitative eye throughput screening, especially IP and naphtyridine derivatives to bind TGR. We did a crystal structure of this uh, fragments bound to TGR, and we identified at least a couple of sub pockets very close to this rotating tyrosine residue. A naphtyridine binding sub pocket and a hip <coughs> binding sub pocket. Here you can find the derivatives of hip and naphtyridine used for our screening in uh, XRD crystallography. And we found that both these derivatives were able to inhibit TGR in vitro, of course. Here is reported a kinetic um, enzyme, enzymatically um, a kinetic experiments of how naphtyridine, for instance, can reduce the enzymatic activity of TGR with increasing concentration. And as you can see, as you increase the concentration of naphtyridine, both the KM and the maximum velocity are reduced, 
suggesting that there is, uh, it, it's, it looks like a mixed competition. But the problem of these fragments is that their, their um, IC50s values are quite high from one to five millimolar. So we have been trying to optimize these fragments by fragment linking approach indeed, trying to uh, put together the heap derivatives and uh, naphtyl derivatives using a chemical linker to make a new chimeric compound, compound that showed an improved affinity for TGR and an improved inhibition activity. And actually we have been successful in obtaining a few of these chimeric compounds with inhibition activity improved up to one micromolar. So in the micromolar um, uh, range. Here in the right panel, you can see in silico docking experiments. For instance, this is one of our chimeric comp compounds that we did. This is another chimeric compound. This is the third chimeric compound. I want to focus your attention on the fact that all these compounds are very close to the tyrosine residue. And this is why we call it the this site one doorstop pocket, because the binding of this compound can make this tyrosine stuck in its position, in its position, its original position. So it cannot move apart to allow NADPH to enter inside the TGR. So TGR is shut down because there is a doorstop molecule inside the, this, this, um, this active site. But while we, we, uh, we have been successful, su successful in making um, XRD uh, um, crystallography on the single fragments, when we try to make complexes of um, these chemical compounds on TGR, we always failed because of many reasons, likely because these compounds, because of their chemical nature, start to be a little bit hydrophobic. As you have to keep in mind that there is a, um, a need to make this compound hydrophobic they are supposed to penetrate membrane cells. So as you know, making crystals with hydrophobic compounds is quite challenging in both co-crystallization approach or a soaking approach. And this is why we try to get rid of this issue by changing approach using cryo-EM. And uh, KUM, you know, is, um, is starting to be a, a one main technique to investigate about the conformational and compositional states of your um, biomolecular target because um, it can intercept conformational change of a small part of your, of your uh, protein particles or the binding of small ligands in condition where conventional, let me say, rigid methods uh, fail, like a crystallography. And this is he reported a very schematic representation of how you can um, obtain a cryo EM map of your target. The first step is a uh, screening of your quality of your protein molecule or in general biomolecules. By TM, you have to uh, be sure that your protein particles are single protein particles and the TM can allow you to uh, check for this homogeneity. Then you have to embed your uh, biomolecules inside a support within a very thin vitreous size. Then you, can, you have to collect images of your uh, biomolecular uh, particles, single particles, many images to have many particles to be processed. Then you, could, you can move, move on uh, on data processing, taking advantage of uh, several um, processing softwares 
like a Relayum or Cryo Spark and so on. For instance, this is how TGR appears, looks like under a TM microscope. So during the first step, the first screening step, these white particles here, here is a um, TGR alone without inhibitor. And as you can see, they appear like uh, single particles. But even after uh, mixing with uh, some of our inhibitors that we did, the single particle state of TGR is uh, kept. So meaning that you can uh, actually analyze your mixture, TGR inhibitor, mixed by cryoM. And this is what we did. We, we chose to, to collect a first small data set of this mixture made by one inhibitor and a TGR from Schistosoma Mansoni using a glacious 200 kilovolt cryotm at 200 kilovolt uh, accelerating voltage and using as a detector this kind of detector particle. This small, first, very first small data set um, uh, was including only 845 images, which has very, very few images. However, we have been able to build a, a KUM structure of TGR after uh, mixing with um, one of our inhibitor, that is this one, 9BP128, that showed the IC50 of uh, 67 micromolar. You can see here the seven most representative two-dimensional classes of TGR in combination with, hopefully in combination with 9BP128, resulting from only 70,000 particles. And these classes allowed us to build a first initial, um, a first model, three-dimensional model of the structure at 4.8 resolution, which is not that high. But as you can see, if compared to this cryoEM, experimental cryoEM app, to the published PDB structure of TGR without inhibitor, of course, you can see that there is a good overlapping between the experimental cryoEM and the PDB uh, published and obtained by X-ray uh, crystallography. But the main, the main result comes out if you take a look at the dual stop pocket. It is again the PDB structure of TGR. It is the location, the position of the dual stop pocket in one monomer. The second one is uh, here. Here is how the doorstop pocket would appear without an inhibitor. This is again the KUM map overlap, overlapping with a, a PDB structure. And this is how the doorstop pocket, where this inhibitor was supposed to bind, because it has been uh, designed to bind in this position. Uh, looks like, as you can see, this region that is quite empty in the PDB is filled with some extra density in the doorstop when you overlap the cryoEM map. And this region is covering, at least in part, both the sub pocket, the binding, uh, the sub pocket binding of both the naphtyridine and the EP compounds, suggesting from this small data set that there is something that is not belonging to the protein right there, bound there. But you know, 845 images is quite a, a few images to, to say something about these extra density uh, maps. So we, we, we moved on uh, collecting a second large data set this time taking uh, advantage of more than 2,600 images and by changing the detector from a Falcon to a K2 camera, same setting, same setting of the uh, CryoTM, 200 kilovolt accelerating voltage. 
uh, let me thank for uh, the processing the, the our computing uh, high performing computing class that that we are here in the, in Italy that is called the uh, Cinega. We use the Reliant as data uh, processing software, and this is how the two dimensional projections of this new large data set uh, look look like. As you can see, we started from the first data set with 70,000 particles. And with this second data set, we have been able to reach 400,000 particles, good particles, to have at least 38 two dimensional classes. And uh, amongst them, you can recognize at least seven uh, different orientation of the molecules. And you can also recognize, start to recognize um, secondary structure, structural elements inside, inside these molecules. If you take a look at these seven um, best two dimensional projections of our sample, um, you can see the secondary structural element quite well, but there is another uh, important thing to. to um, to take under consideration. For instance, this class is quite in accordance uh, with the PDB structure. Also this class, also this class, they look like actually the PDB published the model. But if you look this class, for instance, or this class, for instance, you can see that in some case, some particles are missing part of the molecule. For instance, here, there is a missing region here that is this missing GRX domain. Or here, this is the TGR um, molecule observed from top. This is a top view of, of the uh, TGR, sorry, of the TGR molecule. And here in this two dimensional view, there is this missing domain. But we knew about this issue as we knew by XRD uh, crystallography that this protein uh, tends to lose these N-terminal GRX uh, domains. However, the most important things is the resolution that we achieved uh, using this larger uh, second um, data set using always the same samples, TGR plus this 9BP128 inhibitor we have been successful, successful in improving the resolution from 4.8 to 3.3. Here you can see how the GRX domain are less solved than the TRX domains because of the issues that we observed during the two-dimensional, um, uh, in the two-dimensional classes. It is again, they published the PDB X-ray structure of TGR and this is again how they fit well together. The shape, the shape is well fitting. The cryo -EM shape is well fitting the PDB shape, shape. And again, if you look the uh, doorstop pocket in TGR, which should be empty, and if you overlap the, cry the new cryo -EM map onto the PDB model, you uh, again see some additional extra density here, here, and maybe something here. And this is very interesting because, um, as you know, uh, fragments or chimeric compounds are thought to be um, present inside the protein with high quality, high quality interaction. This means from this second data set that we have been successful in making um, chimeric compounds able to bind there where, where they were supposed to bind with high quality interactions in a secondary allosteric site. Uh, let me thank all my collaborators who took part in this, in this project. And uh, again, Thank you so much for this opportunity.